Hi everyone, my name is George and in this video I have an interesting camera to review. The specs of this camera seem to be great for planetary imaging and in the meanwhile you can even do some deep sky photography using it. But before we go further, I want to point out that this video is just the first part of my review. Today I will introduce you to SV Boini SV705C and its characteristics. I will share my first impressions after a few nights of using it and uh, I will talk about a little color issue that this camera has. The second part of this review will be filmed once SV Boni releases a software update for this camera where the color issue should be resolved. And as usual for a video review, I want to point out that I was not sponsored or paid for making this video. SV Boni has sent me this camera for review purposes and uh, I have used this camera for a few times already. Just a few nights of imaging showed me that this camera could be a good option to have. SV705C is interesting, although it has some nuances. And this is the reason why I have split this review into two parts. But first, let's go over some camera characteristics. As I said at the beginning, SV Boni SV705C is a planetary astrophotography camera. It has a Sony IMX585 sensor with a 2.9 micrometer pixel size, which is good for planetary imaging. This sensor has a low readout noise and zero amp glow. Low readout noise is resulting in a higher signal to noise ratio and zero amp glow is great when you take uh, long exposure images. SV705C has a pretty big sensor for planetary camera. On the other hand, it gives you a bigger field of view, so you can take panoramic pictures of the moon surface. And in some cases, you would have enough field of view to locate a deep sky object there. The rest of the characteristics you can see on the screen right now. The camera body has two inputs. So the first one is USB 3.0 for data transferring, and the other one is ST4 port for guiding. On the back of the camera body there is a quarter and 20 screw hole that you can use to uh, connect this camera to a tripod and use it as an old sky camera or just take some uh, star trail shots of the night sky. And in that case you'll need an additional lens to capture images. Now let's look how this camera performs in different areas of astrophotography. And first let me show you some live views of planets and the moon surface that I was able to capture when I was lucky to have something you can call average seeing conditions. Here is a picture of the moon I captured through the Skywatcher 150PDS telescope. Uh, this is a stack of 100 separate frames that were stacked in the Auto Stacker app. This is how planet Jupiter looked like when I was capturing it using a 10-inch mid LX200 telescope on December 17th. The seeing was actually not great on that night, but it was the best one that I had while testing this camera. And this is the final image that I got. Now let's look at the planet Mars. This one I captured through Skywatcher 150PDS and Teleview PowerMate 5X Parallels on January 8th this year. Here is a final image I got after processing this recording. On that night, I also pointed my telescope to the moon and captured a 1000 frames video of one of its areas. And now you're looking at the image that was tagged using just 200 frames out of this 1000 frames video. The SV Boni SV705C also appeared as an interesting camera for some deep sky photography, and here are some images I captured recently. I have captured three different deep sky objects like the Boats Galaxy, also known as Messier 81. I've captured the globular cluster Messier 3. And of course I captured the Orion Nebula that appeared really nice on the camera sensor. The only concern I had with the deep sky imaging is that the fact that I couldn't reveal colors of deep sky images in the way that I had expected to do. At first I thought maybe there was a problem with my processing skills or stacking settings, but Esfibony replied me that they actually planning to release a software update for this camera later in February or March, where this color issue should be resolved. So I'm going to wait for this software update and then I will take a look again at the camera performance. A couple of aspects you want to consider when doing deep sky photography as well. Uh, first, it has a small pixel size that would give you a higher image scale. This camera would work great for 
some galaxy and planetary nebulae imaging, but some wide targets might not fit in the camera field of view. Although it all depends on the focal length of your telescope. And second thing that this camera does not have active cooling. Of course, you don't need active cooling for a planetary camera, but it's always nice to have that for uh, deep sky photography where you take long exposure images. In conclusion, I think that this camera is a nice and uh, more affordable option that you might want to get if you're just uh, studying industrial photography. And my future plan with this camera is to wait for a software update and after that continue imaging and uh, film a second part of this video review where I share more details about the capturing process and the results using this camera. I hope you enjoyed watching this quick review and if you did, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, also consider subscribing to my channel to stay tuned for the second part of this review. Thank you guys so much for watching this video till the end. I really hope to see you in the future videos and until then, clear skies.